A to Z Mysteries, Book Number Eleven, The Kidnapped King, by Ron Roy, Chapter Nine. Maybe Sammy thinks Joe knows who the kidnappers are. Ruth Rose said. Maybe Dink said, or maybe Joan is the kidnapper. Josh and Ruth Rose looked up from their jello. Josh had a cool whip on his nose. His tutor? He asked. Think about it, Dink went on. Sammy wakes up in the middle of the night. Someone's in his room. He recognizes Joan and grabs a pile of glass, yellow glass, because he remembers how much her name sounds like the French word for yellow, and he knows I know that. But how could she be the kidnapper? Ruth Rose asked. She's Sammy's friend. She came here to help him. Yeah, and you saw how upset she was this morning. Josh said that couldn't be an act. I still think Sammy just grabbed the first pile of glass his hand landed on in the dark. Ruth Rose stood up. There's one way to find out, she said. Let's go to the hotel and tell to her. Okay, Dink said. But she's not at the hotel. My mom said she was meeting Joan at the diner. Good, Josh said, gulping down the last of his jello. I can get an ice cream while we talk. The kids took Pal and hurried to Ellie's diner on Main Street. Dink glanced through the window, but he didn't see Joan Clinker or his mom. I wonder where they are. Mom's car isn't here either, Dink said. Looking up and down Main Street, let's ask Kelly. Ruth Rose suggested. Josh pushed the door open, and the kids stepped inside. Two teenagers were eating scrambled eggs, but no one else sat in the booths or at the counter. Hey there, kids! Ellie said. Hi, cute Poochie. She bent down and patted Pal, then stroked his ears. Shall I scoop up three scones? She asked. Dink shook his head. No thanks. I'm looking for my mom. He said. Have you seen her? She was supposed to meet someone here a little while ago. Ellie shook her head. Nope. Haven't seen your mother in a few days. She said. Maybe they're at the hotel. Ruth Rose said. Dink nodded. I guess it's worth a try. He said. They thanked Ellie and headed for the Shangri-La Hotel, two blocks up Main Street. Why couldn't we at least get cones to go? Josh asked. He placed one hand dramatically across his forehead. I think I feel faint. Later, Dink said. After we find Sammy, and after we find my mom, he thought. Three minutes later, they walked into the hotel. Mr. Linkletter was sitting on one of the lobby chairs, eating a donut and sipping coffee. Well, hello there," he said when the child approached him. He glanced at Pal. Joshua, I assume your dog is、um, house trained. Josh grinned as Pal flopped down at Mr. Linkletter's feet. Yep, and he's hotel trained too. Mr. Linkletter twitched an eyebrow. Well then," he said, "how can I be of service today?" I'm looking for my mom," Dink said. She was supposed to meet Joan Clinker at Ellie's, but they're not there. Have you seen them? Mister Linkletter set his coffee down. I didn't see your mom, but Miss Clinker left the hotel a short while ago. Did she say where she was going? Mister Linkletter shook his head. Not a word. Dink glanced around the hotel lobby. Where could his mother be? She always let him know if she had to change her plans. Always. She didn't leave a note or anything. I'm sorry, Donald. Mister Linkletter said. Perhaps she's gone back home. Would you like to call her? Suddenly, Dink felt sick. He blinked back tears. Something was wrong. First, Sammy disappeared, and now his mother was gone. And she'd been on her way to see Joan Clinker with the yellow glass. Mister Linkletter wiped his fingers on his napkin and stood up. "Come, you can use my phone," he said. He took Dink over to the counter. 
Hal followed Mr. Linkletter, sniffing at his heels. Link dialed and listened for his mother's voice on the other end, but no one answered. He set the phone down and looked up at Mr. Linkletter. Where could she be? he asked. Chapter 10 Just then, Pal began growling and biting at Mr. Linkletter's left shoe. What on earth? Mr. Linkletter said, pulling his foot away. But Pal wouldn't give up. Using his paws and teeth, he tried to pull Mr. Linkletter's shiny black loafer right off his foot. Joshua, Mr. Linkletter said, please teach your dog some manners. Take it off, Ruth Rose suddenly said. Mr. Linkletter glanced down at Ruth Rose. I beg your pardon. I think I know what Pal wants, she said. Please take off your shoe. Mr. Linkletter let out a big sigh. Very well, if that will bring peace. The tall man leaned over and removed his left shoe. He showed it to Pal. There, satisfied, he asked. Pal grabbed the shoe in his mouth and dropped it at Josh's feet. I was right, Ruth Rose yelled. She picked up the shoe and held it upside down. On the sole, stuck to a wad of gum, was a piece of shiny yellow glass. The dog was after a nasty piece of gum, Mr. Linkletter asked. No, Dick said. That piece of glass is from Sammy's kaleidoscope. This means the kidnappers brought Sammy here to the hotel. Donald, you're giving me a headache, Mr. Linkletter said, taking his shoe back. He pulled the gum off and slipped the loafer back on his foot. Who is Sammy? What kidnappers? Dink told Mr. Linkletter about Sammy's disappearing from his bed. Then he explained about Joan Clinker's French lesson, Sammy's kaleidoscope, and the trail of yellow glass. Now my mom's missing too, Dink said. And I think Joan Clinker kidnapped them both. She might be keeping them up in her room. Um, Dink, Josh said. Officer Fallon said Sammy was taken away in a boat. How could he be in the hotel and in a boat at the same time? I don't know, Dink said. But I still want to check out Joan Clinker's room. That piece of glass on your shoe proves Sammy was here. Mr. Linkletter sighed and set down his half-eaten donut. Very well, he said. Ms. Clinker has room 301. I'll take you up there, but you must be very quiet. Our guests don't expect crowds of children parading about the halls. He looked down at Pal. But the hound has to stay down here. The Shangri-La does not permit animals upstairs. But he can smell stuff, Josh said. We need him. Mr. Linkletter looked at Pal's big brown eyes. Oh, all right. What's one more broken rule? The kids and Pal followed Mr. Linkletter into the elevator. When it stopped on the third floor, they all walked quickly to room 301. A man in a white uniform was pushing a cart full of linens down the hall and around the corner. Mr. Linkletter unlocked the door and pushed it open. Joan Clinker's bed was made, and two suitcases stood on the floor. Do your thing, Josh whispered into Pal's ear. Pal walked in a wide circle, sniffing the carpet. Suddenly he made a beeline for the closet and began scratching at the door. Josh opened the closet door and Pal rushed in. Dink noticed that the closet was empty. Joan Clinker had packed everything. What's in there, boy? Josh asked, getting down on his hands and knees. While Pal and Josh searched the closet floor, Dink and Ruth Rose looked under the bed and in the bathroom. Suddenly, Josh backed out of the closet. Look what Pal found, he cried. In his hand, he held a small piece of yellow glass. 
You are right, Dink, Ruth Rose said. Sammy must have been in this room. Just then, Pal raced from the room with his nose to the floor. The next thing they heard was Pal barking and growling. Everyone followed him, just in time to see Pal attack the white linen cart. He bit at the side of the cart and tried to pull it back along the floor. The man in the white uniform pushed the cart in the other direction. Get out of here, mutt! The man yelled, kicking at the dog. That wasn't a good idea. Pal grabbed the man's pants cuff in his teeth and began thrashing and growling. Pal, no! Josh shouted. He pulled Pal away, but the hound was still barking at the man. Mister Linkletter looked at the man. Who are you? He asked. Just collecting the laundry, the man said, glaring at Pal. Mister Linkletter pointed to the words stitched into the man's shirt. But we don't use ice laundry service, he said. Suddenly, the man bolted for the elevator, but he tripped over Pal's leash and fell on his face. Mister Linkletter moved spryly and sat on the man's back. What are you doing in this building? He demanded. I ain't talking," the man mumbled with his face in the carpet. "Help me, guys," Dink said, grabbing the side of the cart. With a solid yank, the kids toppled it over. A mountain of sheets and towels piled out onto the floor. In the bottom of the cart lay Sammy, tied and gagged. Chapter Eleven. The three kids slid Sammy out of the cart and laid him gently on the floor, while Dink and Josh worked on the knots. Ruth Rose pulled away his gag. Before Sammy could speak, Pal waddled over and covered his face with wet dog kisses. Sammy gave Pal a big hug. Then he sneezed. They all jumped when the elevator door slid open and Joan Clinker stepped out. When she saw Sammy and the man on the floor, her face turned as white as the sheets. "You, you've found Sammy," Joan said, rushing to his side. "Ain't that cute?" the man on the floor said. "Well, I ain't taking this rap alone. She's the one planned the whole thing. We done it together." "What are you talking about?" Joan said. "I, I've never seen this man in my life." The man let out a cackle. "What a lousy thing to say about your own husband," he said. Just then, the elevator door slid open again. Dink's mother and Officer Fallon stepped into the hallway. "Well, well," Officer Fallon said. "Good thing I brought two pairs of handcuffs." An hour later, Joan Clinker and her husband Nick were in jail. Mr. Linkletter went back to finish eating his donut. Dink, Josh, and Pal, Ruth, Rose, Sammy, and Dink's mom joined Officer Fallon in the police station. "You were pretty clever to leave that trail of yellow glass," Officer Fallon told Sammy. "Thank you," Sammy said. "I hoped Dink would remember that the French word for yellow sounds like Joan." "I did remember," Dink said. But Josh's dog was the one who found most of the glass. Josh beamed and patted Pal's head. "Good dog," he said. "Well, Miss Clinker and her husband sang like little birds," Officer Fallon said. "They planned this thing carefully. After they stashed Sammy in the closet upstairs, they brought one of his slipper tassels to the river to throw us off the trail. I heard them talking in the car." Sammy said, "They were going to take me back to Costa. I would have disappeared, just like my parents. Then my father's enemies would have taken over our country." Dink looked at his mom. "How did you know we were at the hotel?" he asked. "Well, I met Joan outside Ellie's," Dink's mother said. "She said she was happy to be out of the hotel and suggested we go for a walk." Naturally, we talked about the kidnapping, and she mentioned Sammy's slipper tassel being found in the river. What she shouldn't have known about, right? Said Ruth Rose. Dink's mother smiled. Right, 
and when I happened to mention the trail of yellow glass, she suddenly hurried away. She said she had something important to do at the hotel, so I came right here to see Officer Fallon. Officer Fallon smiled at the three kids, but by the time we got to the hotel, you three had everything under control. Just then, Officer Fallon's computer said, "You've got mail." Ah, I've been waiting for this email," he said. He moved his computer mouse, clicked twice, and smiled. "You should all hear this, so I'll read it aloud." The king and queen of Costa have been found, thanks to your tip. They are alive and well. Both send love to their son. Want him to come home immediately. Everyone in the office cheered. Sammy looked shocked, and then he beamed. But how did you find them? He asked Officer Fallon. Your kidnappers spilled the beans, he said. They were hired by the same guys who kidnapped your parents. They gave me names and places, so I just emailed the Costin police. The next day, Dink, Josh, Pal, and Ruth Rose said goodbye to Sammy. Each of the kids gave him a wrapped gift. Pal's gift for Sammy was a big wet lick on the cheek. Sammy smiled, then sneezed. Three weeks later, a large package arrived at Dink's house. It was from Costa and addressed to all three kids. Dibs on the cool stamps, Josh said. Dink opened the parcel and found four smaller packages labeled Dink, Josh, Ruth Rose, and Pal. Dink and Josh found small gold kaleidoscopes in their packages. Their names were spelled on the sides with tiny rubies. What did he send you? Josh asked Ruth Rose. Oh my gosh! She screamed and held up a dark blue robe, just like Sammy's. Here's a picture and a note, Dink said. He read the note aloud. The picture showed Sammy wearing the gifts the kids had given him: Ruth Rose's sweatshirt, Josh's jeans, and Dink's baseball cap. Dear friends. I miss you. My father says you can come here and visit some day. You can even bring Pal, your friend Sammy Bin Oz. Suddenly, Pal let out a woof. He wants us to open his package. Josh said. He helped Pal rip off the paper. Inside, they found a purple velvet doggy sweater. Good dog had been stitched into the velvet with gold thread.